It's now 2014, and I've been working for months on my first website, graymalin.com. What I wanted most of all was for my customers to purchase my artwork and be able to actually receive the item framed, ready to hang on the wall. With a lot of hard work, we found the right framing partner, and we were able to launch the website with not only framing available, but we actually offered it for free for the first week and it really catapulted the sales and the launch and the excitement of the website. In fact, it was such a genius idea back then that we are literally still offering this promotion a couple times a year to this day. So after the website launched, I started working on this project in Italy. I first went to Italy when I studied abroad in college and I spent one magical night in a town in the region of Cinque Terre and I always dreamed of going back. Everybody has a different fantasy when they hear the word Italy. For me, I actually have a little bit of an obsession with the beach umbrellas. So my goal for this series was to basically shoot as many beaches as possible while road tripping through Italy. My very good friend who speaks Italian accompanied me. I started down in Sicily and we visited stunning beaches after Sicily, we headed to the Amalfi Coast, and I'll never forget our first day when we arrived and we were driving along the cliff trying to find our hotel and we were screaming because it was so scary. There were cars just flying along on this little cliffside road and we thought we were going to just drive off the side. It was terrifying. So we get to the hotel, we basically like look at each other and say, how are we going to get to all these little beaches? because driving is really, really scary. So we wandered down to a little restaurant that uh, happened to have a beautiful view over the beach in Positano and ordered a cocktail. And as we're sitting there, I looked out at the harbor and I said to Natalia, like, look at all these boats. If, if only we could get ourselves a boat. So right as I say this, this older woman who's sitting right next to us turns and she says, did someone say boat? I'm Lucy Bello of Lucy Bello Boats. How can I help you? We were just discussing how it'd be great if we could get out on a boat tomorrow. She's like, oh, give me one minute. I'll make a phone call. She <laughs> turns back around and she goes, you see that big yacht out there? And she points to the harbor and she's like, you see the little boat to the right of the big yacht? And we're like, yes. She goes, okay, it's the boat behind it that's tiny. That one we have for you. And I was like, oh my God. Thank you so much, we'll take it. What was really amazing about having the boat is that we were able to get to all the beach towns in one day. We started at the bottom of the Malfi Coast in the towns of Minori and Maori, and then we continued up and we went to the Ravello area, we went to the town of Amalfi. I would get off the boat, I would walk around, shoot the beaches, and then get back on, we would continue. One of my favorites that we came across was Preano, this beautiful sort of very, very small beach with all these colorful boats. Then we hopped back on the boat and we went to Capri. I actually had not really thought to shoot Capri for this project, but I am so fortunate we got there because it turns out that so many people love Capri. When we got over there, I'll never forget seeing the Il Faraglione rocks, which are very famous because there's a hole in the middle and you can drive through. And then around noon, we got back to Positano and I jumped off and I went up to this sort of high elevation point and I got this photograph that would eventually become the cover of my book, Italy. Overall, that day was so successful thanks to this fateful meeting of this woman named Lucy Bello. So after the Amalfi Coast, we continued to many different regions in Italy. We crossed the country to an area called Rimini and that is by far the umbrella mecca of Italy. I'm talking 500 plus beach clubs, each with at least 500 umbrellas. And I would walk along the beach with like a little ladder and I would stand on the ladder and get above the umbrellas and shoot. And Natalia would sort of help me. I continued up to Cinque Terre, which was basically my nirvana of how this whole project started. 
after Cinque Terre, I would go on to shoot Portofino and San Remo. And over the next five years after this, I would go back to Italy every summer for two to three weeks in road trip. I shot all of Lake Como. I fell in love with shooting from boats and I would rent these beautiful old Riva wooden boats and sand and shoot where you can see the front of it purposefully. So what's crazy is that while I was shooting this project in Italy, I was also posting pictures from my cell phone to Instagram and I would add a little filter that would make it feel timeless. And suddenly there were all these people who were starting to follow me. And these weren't people I knew, these were strangers. These were art lovers. These were people who loved Italy. And I started to wonder, would this be a great tool for me to use to expand my brand? I mean, at the beginning, I was just posting pictures of my feet, of my dog, of my like normal life. I mean, I look back at those first couple of Instagram pictures. It's really funny. They're still published. <laughs> And I guess I was in the right place at the right time with Instagram because there weren't, you know, people doing travel pictures. And I was definitely one of the first photographers using it in this dreamy way. So while I was in Italy, I also shot these Mylar balloons spelling the word ciao along the beach in Cinque Terre. This was part of another project that I started shooting a couple years before. And the idea came to me when I was standing under the Eiffel Tower holding about a dozen red balloons and I noticed all these people staring at me, smiling, and how much joy balloons and sort of iconic landmarks brought to someone. I mean, we had shot these playful balloons all over. The first one was the word dessert out in the desert. We shot pink flamingos and pineapples above the water in Bermuda. I even shot Good Day in Sydney, not to mention many other fun ones. But what image really took off with this project was one I shot in Aruba, and it was the phrase, I am busy. Jeff and a friend of mine went out like really deep in the water in Aruba to hold up the balloons. And as I was shooting this, I was just laughing at how ironic this phrase was in this perfect Caribbean landscape. And when I got home, I immediately hung it on my own wall and sure enough, this became like a cult classic. And I went on to continue shooting this series, but what's really nuts is that thanks to the power of Instagram, someone at J. Crew saw that I was shooting this project and reached out and asked if I could make a special photograph for their social media for like a Valentine's Day. And I shot these heart balloons above the water in Hawaii and Ultimately, I was starting to learn that Instagram really was unbeknownst to me, allowing so many people out there to learn about me and my work. And before I knew it, I was getting a phone call from a producer at the Today Show. They were like, hey, Gray, um, Jenna Bush Hager would love to do a feature interview on you. And I'm like, are you kidding me? And sure enough, she comes out to LA we shoot in my house, my studio, and then I go to New York City and she comes in a helicopter with me and we film the whole thing. It airs on the Today Show in almost a five minute feature story. And sure enough, this sends thousands of people to my website, which instantly crashes. But it didn't matter. I was just so excited that all of these new people out there had just learned about me and my work and I mean, I couldn't have been more thrilled. I hope that by hearing these stories, we are able to connect and that by listening to this whole journey, you are able to understand the value of your art. It's so much more than a photograph.